Hey, what's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Vilross keyboard and touchpad hub for the Raspberry Pi. And basically what we have here is a keyboard and touchpad that we can put a Raspberry Pi 4 inside of it. And it might sound a little familiar because the Raspberry Pi Foundation recently released the Raspberry Pi 400 and I figured it was time to take a look at this Vilross device and I've also had a few viewers asking about it since the release of the Pi 400. Now the keyboard and touchpad hub goes for around $50 but you have to add a Raspberry Pi. I'm personally going to be using a Raspberry Pi 4. And if you don't have extra accessories like a USB Type-C power supply and micro HDMI, you'll have to add those also. So let's go ahead and get this out of the box. They only offer this in one color. It's black. Like I mentioned, it's $49.99. It has a touchpad and keyboard built in. Also comes with a fan and all the mounting hardware we need to get our Raspberry Pi 4 inside of it. Now, even though the Raspberry Pi 4 is going to be sitting inside of this unit, they're using a wireless keyboard and trackpad combo here. So you do have to plug in this USB dongle. It also requires two AAA batteries to power the keyboard and trackpad. It's a little odd since the Raspberry Pi is so close to it and they could have easily used the Pi to power it. Now, right out of the box, I can tell you that it definitely looks like some cheap plastic and the keyboard itself doesn't feel great either. Feels about like a $10 keyboard that you can pick up on eBay, one of the cheap wireless keyboards. Looks like this is the piece we're going to be mounting the Raspberry Pi 4 inside of, and our extra accessories are going to be inside of the unit. So we get some mounting screws and full instructions, plus we have a little 5 volt fan. This will run on 5 volts or 3.3. And it looks like this is the battery cover for inside of the unit. Yeah, so that's where our two AAA batteries are going to go, and there's also a little adapter holder in here. I think it goes right in there and this will clip right over it. This is the cover. It just fell off in transit. And the Raspberry Pi 4 is going to kind of sit on the side like this. So we will be able to access all of the USB ports, Ethernet, HDMI, and USB Type-C on the Raspberry Pi when this is all assembled. And the Raspberry Pi 4 is actually going to mount to this bottom plate here. So let's go ahead and get this thing assembled. Now there shouldn't be any setup for the keyboard and trackpad because it's just a wireless dongle that we need to plug in, but I will need to add some batteries to make everything work here. So I've got this set up. Now it's time to mount the Raspberry Pi 4 in the bottom plate. So they do provide everything you need to get this mounted up, uh, but one of these screws won't be going in from the bottom here. There's four little standoffs here, but only three of them are threaded because the other screw is going to go in through the bottom when we put the plate on the keyboard itself comes with the screws to mount the Raspberry Pi 4 inside of here. We're just going to use three of them here to secure the Raspberry Pi 4. So now that I have the Raspberry Pi mounted, it's time to turn my attention to the fan. This is actually going to sit inside of the keyboard housing. And it's actually a little odd how they have this set up. There's no screws for this. There's a tiny gully where this fan fits exactly in here. It fits in here snug, so it's not going to go anywhere. And you can adjust the location just by sliding it up and down. Now this kit didn't come with any heat sinks for the Raspberry Pi CPU, but as long as we have that fan blowing on the CPU, we don't have to worry about thermal throttling. Even overclocked, it should be fine. I've personally used the Pi Moroni fan shim in the past and it's basically the same thing. Just a fan blowing on the CPU and even overclocked to 2.1 GHz, I never had any thermal throttling issues. So I've just plugged the fan into the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi 4. You can set this up for 3.3 volts or 5 volts. 5 volts is going to be a bit louder, but it's going to offer better cooling. Now all I need to do is use these six longer screws to hold the bottom plate to the keyboard itself. This is just going to snug everything up. And once it's finished up, just make sure you have the USB dongle plugged in so the keyboard and trackpad works. Over here, we have access to our USB and Ethernet. And in the rear, we have access to all of the other external ports on the Raspberry Pi 4. And by the way, you can access the SD card slot from the bottom of this unit. It's a bit tricky to get off. There's two little clips here. But I'm glad that they added this because I didn't want to have to pull this thing apart to throw an SD card in it. So since the keyboard and trackpad on this unit are battery operated, it's not going to stay on all the time and kill the batteries. There is an on and off switch. On the top here, we have another little cover plate. You're going to pull this off and there's a switch right inside of here. And we have a power LED indicator letting us know that the unit is on and it's not going to connect to the Pi right now because it's not powered up. And after 60 seconds of inactivity, if it doesn't connect to something, it'll turn off completely and you'll have to reset it from that switch. So you just have to turn it off and then back on. But let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to plug in my HDMI and my power to the Raspberry Pi 4. 
and the fan has come on. It's not super loud at all. I am set at 5 volts here. It's more of a resonating sound because it's in this big plastic enclosure. It's definitely not as loud as some other fans that I've tested for the Raspberry Pi 4. Alright, so here we are. I'm going to go ahead and power on the keyboard and trackpad here. It should automatically connect to the dongle I have plugged into the Raspberry Pi. And it's going to work right out of the box. It's going to work just like a wireless keyboard and mouse would. Now I will tell you, I'm personally not a big fan of trackpads. Even with my main laptop, I use a mouse with it. But, uh, I mean, it works. It's not bad at all. It's definitely not going to be top of the line. Like I said, the keys on the keyboard itself definitely feel like a cheap keyboard. And overall, I mean, that's exactly what we have here. It's a cheaper wireless keyboard and trackpad built into this case here, so we can put a Raspberry Pi 4 in the bottom. So I'm going to see how hard it is to navigate the interface with the trackpad. And it's not bad. We do have a physical left and right click button, but it also works with gestures. So you can single tap, double tap, dual finger scrolling, and we can zoom in and zoom out using this trackpad. Get to a website that'll allow me to do it. We have scrolling, and we can zoom in and zoom out right here. It definitely doesn't have a premium feel, but it's usable, and to tell you the truth, if this was the only unit I had with a Raspberry Pi 4 inside of it, I would probably end up having a physical mouse plugged into this thing, but that's just me. I've never been a real big fan of trackpads. So the whole thing is definitely usable. I'm going to head over here to YouTube and see how the typing goes. And that's kind of my fault. I was overstepping the Raspberry Pi 4's performance here. But the keyboard's working just like any other inexpensive wireless keyboard would. I really do wish they would have set this up to plug directly into the Raspberry Pi somehow. Even just having it powered from the Raspberry Pi's GPIO would have been awesome instead of adding those batteries. It's got volume control, it's got a home button, it's got back, and there's even a brightness control button here, and I've only seen this on laptops. It doesn't work with my monitor, and personally I've never seen it work with the desktop setup, so I'm not sure why those keys are here. But we do have that refresh button, we have volume control, and with a function button we do have F1 through F10, so all the keys we really need are on this unit. So would this be worth picking up for $50? In my opinion, I don't think so. I think they could have done a much better job. I hate the fact that we have a wireless keyboard and trackpad here. We need batteries for that. And we have to have that wireless dongle plugged in all the time. But I think the main thing that bugs me is the size of this unit. It's pretty thick. And if they took a little more time with the design, they actually could have slimmed it down by quite a bit. Because we do have about an inch of plastic above the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi. And that's just wasted space in my opinion. And when we take a look at this next to the brand new Raspberry Pi 400, you can see that it's an absolute hulk. Keep in mind, the Vilross is $50 with no Raspberry Pi 4 installed. And the standalone version of the Pi 400 is $70, or you can buy a full kit with basically everything you need. Power supply, HDMI, micro SD card, and even a mouse for $100. So in the end, because of the size and the build quality of the Vilross, it's really hard for me to recommend this to anybody unless you absolutely don't mind this form factor here and you need that trackpad built in. But other than that, I would say it's a pass on the Vilross. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I just wanted to give you a quick look at this unit. And really, after this video, if you're still interested in picking one of these up, I will leave some Amazon links in the description. Now, if you want to learn more about the Pi 400, I've recently done a review video. I'll leave a link in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.